Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are we all just bringing it up on screen here so I can see? Good morning, Tony. How are you this morning? How are we all? Let me just turn my comments on so I can see. Morning, Roy. Here, you have a beautiful day as well, sweetheart. Um, I'm just going to zoom in a little. There we go. All right, how are we all this morning? I thought I would drop in and do a little live, do a little live Facebook this morning. Um, another little demo as part of the Great Australian Craft Show, creating alcohol ink backgrounds and using die cuts over the top. So this is one that I whipped up yesterday afternoon and I'm going to show you how to create this and I'm going to create a couple of other little cards as well. So um, I'm using the, I'm using alcohol inks and I'm going to create a couple of backgrounds first. So the paper that I have here, um, this is I'm just going to zoom back out a bit because that's a lot. Hang on. Oh, look. Here's live Facebook at its best. Just have to take it out of the holder. Sorry, guys. I've got some focusing issues. Excellent. Okay, while I'm doing this, here's a little look at the studio. Sorry for those of you who get vertigo. Um, oh, didn't need to see that, did you? Oh, there we go. But I'm back out again. Okay. Sorry, guys. Anyone would think I've never done this before. Crikey. There we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's have another go here. What I have is um, Yupo paper. So Yupo paper is a synthetic plastic paper that is fantastic for alcohol inks. So I'm going to create a couple of quick and easy backgrounds. I have a variety of alcohol inks here in front of me. Um, lots of different colors and a couple of different brands as well, rather than just opening up new ones continually, um, I thought I would just show you how to do, I think I might do four quick backgrounds this morning and talk you through how to do those. So I have got here some alcohol blending solution. So alcohol blending solution is fantastic to help create flow on your paper with the um, alcohol that goes on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a start and just squirt some straight over the top. Now it is a clear fluid, so you're not going to see it, but I'm going to start adding some colors here. A couple of things that help me out when I'm doing this is I have, I have them here ready to go, have the lids off, theoretically. I should have been doing that this morning, but I didn't. So I'm going to be mixing together some pinks, some yellows, and some oranges to create some beautiful backgrounds. So I've squirted those colours on, and I'm pretty generous with what I'm using here. And now I can pick it up and move it around and give it a bit of a flow. The other thing that I can do is I can use my heat tool to blow it around. Just like that. So you can see that that is just moving around nicely. I want to add a little bit more yellow there and a little bit more yellow there. 
and I can also use some blending fluid to go back on and help move that around. It's not, the cool thing is it's not difficult either. So I'm fairly certain I haven't made that look too hard. And I'm just now going to pop that aside to dry. So you can see how awesome that looks with very little effort involved. All right, so pop that one aside. And now I'm going to do one in blues and greens. So this time I'm, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm just going to put a little bit more blending solution onto my UPO paper, onto my plastic paper. So I'm going to start off with a green. And I'm going to drip that on and then get into a couple of other, good morning Leanne, a couple of other blues and colours that are going to work well together. So, for example, we want to use colours that are alongside each other on the colour wheel. We don't want to use colours that are opposite, otherwise, because if we do that, then we're going to end up with um, brown. We want, we, don't, we want something that's going to be visually pleasing and pretty. So, now I'm just going to blow that around a little. I've got off here to the side a little cup of isopropyl alcohol and what I'd like to do is I'm going to just drip a little bit on here as well and this is pretty much just a straight alcohol fluid so this will also work and I can pick it up move it around and go from there um, I've got a gold here as well that I want to drip in. I always add the gold last simply because it um, oh, it is it can be a little strong like so that just flew out. So what I need to do is I need to move that around and get it get it a little bit more fluid and couple of drops of blending solution just to help that happen but that gold is gorgeous and it's sitting on top of the alcohol inks really really nicely I apologize if you're getting a bit of a skip on the screen this morning um, everyone knows how much fun I've been having with internet here So you can see that the heat tool is moving around the colour as well. You don't want to over, overwork it because it is a plastic paper, which means that the paper is going to melt if you use too much heat. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking pretty good. But you can see how strong that beautiful gold is. Kind of pretty. All right, pop that one aside. Let's do another one since that one was so fun. Um, I've just realised I've got a big job of ink right there, so I'm just going to clean that up. Okay, um, what else have we got? If I don't use the blending solution, the colours don't move around as well. So I'll show you what happens if I don't use the blending solution. You can see that the drops are just going on and not moving. So this is where the blending solution comes in handy. Um, the colour that I've got here is coral. So these little bottles retail for, I think, $5.50 each. They're super inexpensive. And you can see a little bit goes a really, really long way. So again, I'm keep, keeping to colours that are alongside each other on the colour wheel. And it definitely needs some sort of movement on here. That's pretty, but I think I need to move it around a little bit more. 
So this week I also got in the alcohol ink blower from Couture Creations. So I'll show you how this guy here works. It's just a puffing motion and it gives more of a splattered look rather than a the, the blow that the heat tool was giving. It looks pretty good. Um, I personally prefer the heat tool, but for those of you who don't have a heat tool, then this will also work very, very effectively. So I'm just going to pop that aside there. Heating it with the heat tool dries it off a bit as well. So I do prefer this technique just for speed. All right, there's another pretty one done. And stuck to my glass mat, there we go. Beautiful. All right, I'm just gonna wipe up my little mess here. And I'm going to do another blue and green one. So how is everybody doing this morning? Um, up nice and early, ready to start your day. Pick up some bargains at the Great Australian Craft Show, I hope. I just received um, the delivery guys just being this morning and I have an unopened box on my desk, which is the new Uniquely Creative paper collections the gums and roses i think it's called um oh, so that will be going up online shortly oh look at that that looks pretty good got a little weird, bit of yellow here as well and just dripping these colors in is working great um you do have to be a little bit generous with your colors don't be shy when using when you're using alcohol inks. Uh, like I said, a little bit does go a long way, but you still want to have something with a little bit of punch behind it. So I'm going to now just move these around. Another thing that using a heat tool does is it creates these waves. These lovely little lines in here. So they work really, really well. Where the puffer tool, the puffer tool that I used earlier, um, creates more of a blended sort of look. So both tools do different things. They're, both heat tools are available online, uh, nataliemay.com.au, and they are in the tools section. And... Uh, as long as uh, well as well as lots of other goodies that you didn't think you needed. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to slide some of these out of the way just so that I don't end up tipping them all over on my desk while I'm doing the next step, and I'll pop all the lids back on later. Just pop those all in there. Because I'm a messy crafter, I really do need to make sure I've got a clean spot here in front of me. So, all right. So to create things to put over my beautiful backgrounds, what I can do. So when I created this guy here, I used one of the Scrap Effects silhouettes. So these are gorgeous and I love that they're already done for you. So that is the best thing. Um, there's a few different designs in these. I know uh, there is a, um, a steampunk, there's the fairy, another one as well. You'll actually find those on the website under, under Scrap FX. Um, so I'll show you quickly how, how I got it to sit and how to create the keyhole. 
Uh, let me just open this guy. So as you can see, they are super delicate and so very, very well made. I think that they look amazing. So what I want to do is I need to cut out a hole in my card to fit that. So I've got a pencil and I'm going to, I'm going to trace the outline of my fairy. I'm actually going to flip it over. Am I going to flip it over? No, I'm not. I'm going to sit it like that. And then just use my pencil to outline because I need to use my craft knife in a moment to cut within that keyhole. So when I do that, I need to grab my knife and just cut roughly in my keyhole. So I don't want to cut on the line, I want to cut inside the line. Voila. So now I can take some of my glue. Ah, oh, sorry Carolyn, I don't know what's going on here this morning. I have had an absolute gutful of it. Um, the there we go. Oh no, hang on. Excellent. So what I'm going to do next is I've got some, yesterday afternoon um, I posted that I received a delivery. This is the Tombow Multi Mono Glue. It is a lovely clear drying glue. It has a fine tip and it also has a, a brush tip like so you can slather it on. So these are available online and all I'm going to do is just do a little squeeze a very small amount around my outline here I don't need very much I think on Saturday morning here in Adelaide every Tom Dick and Harry uh, on the internet I upped my internet speed last night but clearly um, it's it's not doing its thing this morning all right, so what I need to do now is I need to line that up over the top. Like so. And I'm going to flip it over and pop some double-sided tape across here just to secure it down. So what is actually going to happen is my, I've created this beautiful keyhole and the alcohol ink backgrounds are going to sit underneath them just like that, which are going to look pretty great. So um, I'll show you a couple of other things as well. So I'm just going to pop that aside to dry somewhere and have a chat to you about die cuts and what else you can do. Um, the alcohol ink backgrounds here are still a little bit wet so I'm just going to quickly dry them off because the die cutting bit is going to look amazing in a sec. Sorry guys, I'm just doing that off camera because you don't need to see me drying ink. Nobody needs to be watching that. Um, so I currently have lots and lots of things in my show specials online and 
Here we go. And you can jump on it any time over the weekend. Um, so here's my background. For those of you who have got a die cutting machine at home, I have a lovely range of paper rose dies. Um, some of them that I helped design, which was great. And these are fabulous for creating cards, putting on scrapbook layouts, doing lots and lots of really cool things. So um, if you do a search for paper rose dies, you'll find them online. So what I'm gonna do, I have pre-cut out a couple of these to show you. So this is the poinsettia border. And what I will do with this, when it cuts out, so you can see that it is a strip like this. Um, what I did is I, I popped the die straight down on my paper and offset it to the side so that when it cuts out, it leaves this little bit here. So I've got my trimmer here and I'm going to trim off Trim off those bits. And trim off those bits. And then that has left me with this beautiful bit here. And what I can do is take my dye, uh, sorry, my alcohol ink background and lay that straight over the top. So it looks amazing sitting behind it. Just like that. Um, so I'm actually going to stick that down off camera. You guys don't need to watch me doing that. Um, so what else have we got? I've also pre-cut the gum leaf border die. This was one of the very first ones that I designed. Um, and this one is probably my favourite. And this this die looks great with Christmas cards as well. For those of you who have started thinking about Christmas cards, um, which isn't me by the way, have zero interest in thinking about Christmas at the moment, before I start thinking of Christmas. So this is another gorgeous one. So this one will look amazing sitting on that background. As you can see, then you pop a little sentiment on here. I think that looks fantastic. So I'll whip that one up in a moment. What else have I cut out? The Horseman. So the Horseman is another beautiful one, fantastic for Anzac Day, and which I know has been and gone, but see that background behind it? That could look great, or that part of the background would look amazing. or sitting on a red sunset would look pretty good too. All right. Um, alternatively, if you have some of these guys, so these are the little, um, I think these are fantastic. These are super versatile and you could just lay them up straight on top like so, pop a sentiment on and you have your instant card. So without totally overthinking the process, you can come up with some pretty pretty beautiful cards just using the die cuts that you've got. If you don't have a die cutting machine, like I said, you've got the advantage of being able to purchase um, these beautiful die cuts from ScrapFX. And, whoops, a bit of bonus stuck on the back there. And create something that's white. That looks amazing. And if you were... Oh God, this freaking internet. And, and if you were super tricky, you could paper piece and color underneath the little flowers. So many very cool things that you could be doing. So this weekend, um, oh, something else I wanted to show you. Intricate die cuts can be hard. I've got this guy here, the die foam, die brush foam pad. This is what I use to push out all the little bits out of my die cutting machine. I've put these out on special for $8.50. Um, you'll find those under show specials on the website. And some of the pokey bits where it's hard to get them out of the dies, I have got 
the die release tool. Got a new stash of these come in a couple of days ago. Three fifty down to three bucks. Knocked a little bit off it for you guys for the weekend. Um, what else is there? So just to recap, what I did, we used the um, alcohol alcohol ink paper and the alcohol inks, which are here, and created our backgrounds. I did use a heat gun to blow it around, but you could also use the puffer tool as well, um, which, which works really, really well. Uh, I used some dies from Paper Rose and the offcut, uh, sorry, the, the silhouettes from Scrap FX. You'll find all of these available online, nataliemay.com.au. Um, and if you can give me 15 minutes or so, I will put the photos of the finished projects up online for you guys to see with links to what we used. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, flick me a message. I will be posting all orders on Monday morning. And um, yeah, I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Stay safe, wash your hands, chat soon.